The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, Beth Moore asks, are you going to join God's plan or wimp out because it's too hard? I like to drive with the windows down with dogs' heads out of them. I, I was trying to teach Queen Esther how to look out the window for months, for months. When I lowered the window, Queen Esther went down with it just like this. <laughs> if and then, next on Life Today. for joining us on Life Today. It's that very special day of the week, Wednesdays with Beth. I'm Betty Robinson, and this is James. And Betty has a book that I think you'll really be blessed to read. As a matter of fact, there, there are pictures of us back when we were dating, and we've been married now 50 years. And uh, this is her story. But, of course, I'm a part of that story. I think maybe a lot of the freedom she had to get was living with me. I mean, that, that's where the overcoming came. I promise you I would have made it without you. I mean, she, she, well, I tried to be your cheerleader, but she picked me up so many times. And I mean, I'm telling you, it's amazing. And, and this is a great story. And uh, there's a journal that comes along with it. And what we're asking you to do is help us rescue people who are trapped in the sex traffic. And we need to get them out. Here's Beth Moore. I know you want to hear. Would you welcome Beth? seems so terribly ridiculous, but Keith and I lost, within 21 days of one another, our two beloved pets. Now, we're dog freaks, and um, my Sonny, my constant companion, was 18 stinking years old. 18. I mean, the most of my youngest daughter's life had Sonny in it. And so, I mean, this was a long time, and I knew that one was coming. I mean, how many dogs make it to 20? Uh, her face was just completely, she was black, and her face was just completely white. And um, who would know if my hair is white? Um, you won't <laughs> know it uh, for a while, but hers, we did not color her hair uh, at that point. And so, uh, but our little Beanie, uh, Beanie, our bird dog, um, was only nine. Uh, Beanie had, had fought off a disease, a bone disease, for many, many years and just been uh, the picture of health, but we gave her medicine every day. Uh, when Sonny died, um, that day, uh, Beanie went and got behind uh, the bushes in our yard that day. And I, I said to her, get out, because I promise you, you're not going anywhere. And get out from behind there. That dog was dead in three weeks. You know, we were all like, but don't you love us? And she was like, I love you, but I, I miss my friend. So she, her body just, isn't that crazy? But her body just gave way to that disease. Just gave way and she was dead in three weeks. So crazy. Well, so I have about a month left to go when I get a new puppy because the Moors have to have a dog. We have to have fur in our, we have to have like dog hair in our throat somewhere. <laughs> You know, it's just us. It's just us. We have to have it. So it was never a question. I've known other people so devastated they never got another one. I can't conceive of that. My dear friend Janice here at LOI, uh, she lost her beloved uh, golden retriever. Um, and, and she was like me. She could not have grieved it more, but she had to get a new one. I mean, that's all there was to it. And so I bring in this little puppy, and of course I name her Queen Esther because why wouldn't I? I'm in Esther, and so I named her Queen Esther. So I, I have this ongoing memory. I thought, I have not been in this Esther, but boy, have I been with Esther. Uh, queen Esther, I call her Star for short, but she is very much the queen. And I, I, I've told you this part of the story before, but it's so perfect for reading out of a portion of Esther. When I, I first got Star, you know, uh, we are go people, and so she, they have to be go dogs, and they're taught how to behave in a car immediately because we can't have any dog that cannot travel. We can't have it. And so, you know, I want them to have a lot of fun. I like to drive with the windows down with dog's heads out of them. I, <laughs> I like it when other people do it. I'll just drive up next to, you know, 
I just love it. I love it. And so I was trying to teach Queen Esther how to look out the window. And, you know, I didn't want her to jump all the way out, so I had to just crack it. And she'd get up, because she'd always stand at the window and look out. So I would start to lower the window, because I'm up in the front seat where I have all four controls. And I'm kind of glancing in my rear view while I'm, I'm, I'm driving. So I'm cracking it down like this, but for months, for months, when I lowered the window, Queen Esther went down with it, just like this. <laughs> I'd bring it back up. I'd bring it back down. Bring it back up. Bring it back down. And I would say to her, you're missing the point. The point is, like, you, you stick up your head and you do it over and you get the real view. But it took forever. Now she loves it, but it took forever. And I'm just like, this is so silly because we drop past people and the window would be halfway down and she'd be down here looking at it. <laughs> Get up. And so I just, but it's such a picture of Esther because the whole book, you know, God is not on the forefront where he is obvious by name all over the page as he is in so many other books. I mean, a picture uh, Esther and Exodus next to one another, they could not be more different. And it's, it's looking, what she had to do was she had to look through the mirror darkly, the glass darkly. Uh, she didn't get to have her head out in that open air where we have very obvious revelation. Working through a whole different set of circumstances. And I, I want to read, I, I, once again, I'm, I'm going to read a long portion, but I just want you to go with me here. Um, Esther chapter 4. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. Of course, there's been a, a death sentence, extermination for an entire people, happens to be the people of God, no less. A death sentence placed upon him. He hears about it. He puts on sackcloth and, uh, cloth and ashes, tears at his clothes. He goes, it says in verse 2, he went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one was allowed to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. Don't you just love how they protected the leader from many of the grief? Oh, by all means. Sometimes that can happen in um, Christian leadership. When you let everybody else handle the pastoral side, I, I, I really am called to study and let everybody else do that. And really, I don't want any sackcloth and ashes in my presence. And we will cease to have anything to say about the scriptures because that's where it applies right there in the real depth of life. And it says in verse 3, And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. Verse 4, When Esther's young women and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Do, do you kind of love that? I, we can't just really camp there because we don't have the time to, but do you just love that for a moment? Don't we kind of do that? Um, somebody will be all upset about something. We'll try to think, uh, you know what? A change of clothes would help. <laughs> Aren't we constantly trying to, you know, if you, honestly, if you looked a little better, you'd feel a little better. Um, let's get the robe off and let's get, you know, because we think that, that fix it. We gotta fix it. There, there are some things you can't just fix with the next outfit. Uh, verse five, then Esther called for Hatach, one of the king's eunuchs who had been appointed to attend her and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was, what it was and why it was. I love that. Hatach went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Verse seven, Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Verse eight, Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her and command her to go to the king to beg his favor and plead with him on behalf of her people. Verse 9, Hatak went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hatak and commanded him to go to Mordecai. So this is going in between. One comes to her, she sends it back to him and say this, verse 11, all the king's servants and 
the people of king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter so that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come to the king these 30 days. Most beautiful woman in the kingdom. But I mean, there were others. I mean, she, she'd not been called in in 30 days. Imagine that your husband just ignored you for 30 solid days. And you want me to go to him. Oh, this time he's the king and he can put you to death. Not make you feel like the living dead. Put you to death. Verse 12, and they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Now, I love all this go-between. Then Mordecai told them, okay, you know what? You reply to Esther, do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is when, when we want to escape it and let somebody else do it. What if this was the very time that for all practical purposes, we were planted on the earth? Such a time as this. It so moves me to see that he tells her, if you keep silent, it's going to come some other way. Why? Because God was faithful to his word. And he had promised that even in their disobedience, they would be carried into oppression and carried into bondage, but that he would deliver them because he had made a covenant with their father Abraham. And he would keep it no matter what. It was based on his faithfulness and not on theirs. He would bring relief and he would bring deliverance, but it would not be through her. And she would go down with it. And I just want you to understand with me today because there is a concept that applies very, very much to you and me. God is going to do his thing. He has a kingdom agenda and it's what he's talking about through the prophets when it says what his will will stand and no man can change it, no matter what. That what he is doing, his kingdom agenda is in stone. He knows exactly what the plan is and he will do his will. His kingdom will come and he will do on earth as it is in heaven. Oh yes, it will happen. But the question becomes in the difficult times of our lives, will we join him in that process and be part of that relief and deliverance that comes to us first and then those around us after us. Will we be part of it or will we pass it over because it's just too hard? I mean, it just takes too much energy. It takes too much death to self for me to do that kind of thing. And so he's going to do it anyway, but you're not and I'm not. And, and so the question on the table today, are we going to miss it? Are we going to wimp out on it? And I'm talking about what's really, really hard. Are we going to wimp out on it? Because we go, you know what? He's, he does not need me. No, he's completely self-sufficient. I am that I am. But he invites us to join him in a kingdom agenda where our works will last all eternity. But we just sit back and go, you someone else. You don't have the thing going in your life that is more important than the call of God in your life. You don't have it. I promise you, the thing you were born for that is the only thing that's going to fulfill you in your heart. I, I, there are many other things we love, many other things we find satisfying, but I'm going to tell you that if you do every other thing, all those wonderful loved ones, and oh, they are, I wouldn't trade my family for anything. But then if I made it to my um, death, just on the eve of my death, and did not fulfill my calling, there would have been something I was still going, you know what? I never quite, I never found it. And, and we'd want to go, Lord, you weren't faithful. You told me I had a calling. And he might say back to us, but you know what? You didn't like your this for such a time as this. You know, uh, for such a time as that. No, this is the this. But Lord, I want for such a time as that. No, no. For such a time as this one right here, this ugly one this ugly one, this deadly one, this deadly one. 
Not at such a time as that. Right here, right in your now. I don't know what's going on, how hard is it? I can only imagine, I, I, I hear from you all the time. I have my own stuff, I got my own problems. I go through my own pain and my own um, just sheer terror of some circumstances. I, I get it, I get it. And uh, what are we going to do with it? Will we join them or will we sit back and watch it because it's, it's gonna happen one way or the other, but we could just perish in our affliction. That's all there is to it. To obtain information on Beth's teaching materials and for her speaking schedule, visit us online at lifetoday.org. Boy, I don't want that to happen. I don't want us to perish and uh, give in to the enemy. I don't want us to be buried by our own mistakes, our own uh, poor judgment, our own uh, lack of trust and faith and obedience to the Lord. Uh, I want him to lift us up out of the circumstances or the trap that they can become. Beth, thank you. You're a blessing. I want all of you as our viewers and those of you here in the studio to look into a situation where you're going to see some of the most beautiful children. They could be ours, wherever you are in your community, in your family. And yet these children are taken literally captive by predators, sexual predators, and sold like slaves. It can be stopped but it can only be stopped because someone cares. Not just enough to weep, but enough to become involved, to literally rescue them. We must do it together. I want you to watch prayerfully, and then you respond as God leads. These are the faces of those who once were, once were happy. Time to rise up, the time to respond. God, those girls with those little numbers, and that's, that's like the menu. I want girl 21 or 15, I want that one. To attempt to gratify perhaps appetites that can never be satisfied. You know, Betty, there's some things you can understand. We know they're not right that people do, the compulsive behavior. But how it is that people can prey on children or hurt children or little girls and take them captive, use them for their own gain, and then those who would come in and pay to use it. It defies imagination. It's the power of demonic darkness and bondage. And only love, God's love, can break the bondage and set the girls free and also the people who are trapped or using them. Yeah, James. And you know, they, they kidnap them any way they can get them. They take them and they take their innocence from them. They take their freedom from them and they take their lives from them. And we can make that difference. We can get these girls out of this captivity that they've been put into, not by choice,
They lie to them. Any way to get them to come with them, if they don't leap uh, willingly, they just steal them and then take them into this bondage and then beat them and abuse them and hurt them badly. And they hurt their hearts and their spirits. We can give them hope. And through the sinners, James, through the people that are there to love them and care for them and get them out of these tragedy situations. And I think it's real important for our viewers to understand that what we do, we see needs all over the world. But what we have been directed by God to do is find those God sent who yielded to go to be his hands of love. And when we see these workers, these caring people, many of them have sold everything that they owned to go and try to rescue people. This is what missionaries do. And when we find them, because we not only look for need, we look for people who are meeting the need effectively. We believe that's the anointing, the divine enabling of God. And when we find that, then we undergird it. And many of the workers right there where you were watching, many of those girls were in Cambodia. Those workers that are helping rescue these children by the thousands, they surrendered to the mission field without us ever knowing, watching us on television in New York City. Sold everything and moved to Cambodia. One example, the, the Life Center in, in uh, Thailand, they worked in Hollywood supplying power plants for all of the movie sets. They sold everything a seven carat diamond ring and left. We found them, they're working, just renting facilities, trying to rescue kids. They've never left. We helped them build the largest center like that in the world to rescue precious children. Now here's what it takes to reach them, to rescue them, to restore them. It takes $128 per child, per person. What we do is we get them out or we get the children before the predator gets them by telling the parents what these people are up to. And then we get these children to life centers and we give them an education and a future. And they go back and help their impoverished community. This is what we do together. Would you help us? Right now we need to restore a life center that burned in the Ukraine. It's incredibly effective. We want to enlarge it. That's a $275,000 need we didn't even know. We need to raise a million dollars overall to help the missionaries do where they've already targeted the outreach. Your gift of $128 or $1,280 would rescue 10, 128 rescue one, or give toward that whatever you can. If you could give $1,000 toward helping us rebuild that life center and expand it, please do it. At whatever level you can help, please dial the number, take your bank card, make the best gift you can. If you want to go online, lifetoday.org, please do, make the gift, please do it. If you write a check, make it to life, but call us and tell us you're mailing it. We have some beautiful gifts to send you to bless you in your spiritual journey as you literally help us rescue people who without the love of God through us and through those workers, they could never be reached. Thank you for making the call. Thank you for going online. Thank you for extending the arms of God to precious girls and precious children. Human trafficking. It's hard to believe it's happening. But at this very moment, innocent boys and girls, many very young, are being forced into sexual slavery and exploited in every way imaginable. And someone must save them. Through Mission Rescue Life, you can help reach, rescue, and restore thousands of children from the horrors of the sex trade in Thailand, Cambodia, India, Ukraine, and many other nations. Your gift today of only $128 will help rescue a child and change their life forever. And with gifts of $64 or $32, we will combine your gifts with others to help reach, rescue, and restore one more child from the horrors of their kidnappers. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you Free To Be Me, Betty Robison's updated account of how she moved from fear and insecurity to true freedom. You'll also receive the companion journal for your quiet time and daily reflections. With your gift of $128 or more to help rescue a child, be sure to request your copy of the Life Application Study Bible. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,000 or more to help rebuild the Life Center in Ukraine destroyed by fire or $1,280 to help rescue 10 children and you may request the limited edition bronze sculpture titled Christian. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Keith and I have loved every single minute that we've gotten to partner with James and Betty in the outreaches of life. We've been part of the mission feeding program, the shelter and the, the water wells. We've loved every single 
effort put forth by this outreach ministry. But we are particularly excited about the opportunity we have called Rescue Life. This one is specifically for children that have been taken into sex trafficking. I cannot think of anything that cries out for our help more than this. Would you partner with us as we reach out to them and literally rescue lives through Rescue Life? This one is something that calls to the innermost part of our hearts and cries out to such victimization that we've got to help. Partnering together, there is no telling what God could do. Let's do everything we can to rescue life. Thank you so much. I hope you will ask for the bronze of Christian. This little boy was rescued out of the sewer. That's where he lived. That's where the kids lived. After the revolution in Romania, it's the only place they had to get shelter. And we're sending this to those of you who will help us restore the, uh, the life center in the Ukraine, the fire damage, drastic. I'm praying for 275 people to give $1,000. Some of you may want to give a large gift to help us rescue these precious women and children. Betty's book, Free to Be Me, for any gift, the journal comes along with it, the Life Application Study Bible. You may ask us, why do you ask us to give and then you give us something? because you really are the great mission outreach. That's why Beth Moore is here. That's why we share life today, because you're important to God. He loves you. We want to help you. So when we offer you something, it's to bless you, to encourage you in your journey, and we want to thank you for helping us help others. God bless you. Thank all of you for watching. Join James and Betty Robison July 18th through the 20th for the Awaken Now Conference at Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, featuring inspiring speakers such as Governor Mike Huckabee, international author and speaker Christine Kane, Reverend Samuel Rodriguez, speaker and best-selling author Lisa Bevere, and many more, including musical guests such as Phillips, Craig, and Dean. Register today for this once-in-a-lifetime event celebrating 50 years of ministry with James and Betty Robison. Go to lifetoday.org. God's love is overwhelming, but if you can just get a hold of a little bit of it. Best-selling author and pastor, Dr. David Jeremiah, tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.